Hey everybody, this is David, the Georgia Photographer, and today is just a quick little video to clear up a last video about the AIS lens chip tutorial. I've got the instructions here, um, and I got something else to do. But the, 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 the quick little update on this is, I, I said at the end, uh, the last thing you do is the lens function section. And what I wasn't clear about in that part was that there, it's kind of vague in the instructions too, but what they're telling you to do here is go to um, aperture F40 on the main menu. When you select that, you select the maximum aperture value on your aperture range. So like on that lens, it was F22. So, and, that, and when it scrolls through, it just scrolls through to F22 and then you, you fire the shutter and it saves it. Once you set minimum aperture, maximum aperture, and focal length, then the lens comes on and starts working. But until you do that third one, that F40 so, uh, main menu option, it won't come on. I just wanted to put that data in there for the people that had watched this. And I'm gonna put um, a link on the other video if I can figure out how to do that, to point it over here, make sure everybody gets that piece of data. I just wanted to make sure I clarified that. Now let's get on to the next step. And that's this. What this is, is a box from Russia. Actually, it's from the Ukraine. Yeah, from the Ukraine. Look at that. <laughs> and here, I've gotten into this Russian stuff lately. <laughs> Let's get into this box. I haven't even opened it yet to see what, what I got. I know what I ordered, so I'm, sure, I'm curious to see what actually showed up. Let's see here. We got crumpled up pictures of some castle in Russia. That's what he's used for his packaging. That's cool. And it's all written in Russian. <laughs> That's pretty smooth. Or probably Ukrainian. Uh, it looks like it was a magazine or something. There's a bunch of photos in here. Ah, there's what we come to get. <sighs> Let's get into the bubble wrap now. He's got it bubble wrapped up good. I've read about these a good bit. It's kind of got my interest peaked on it. And in theory, this one's got a um, setup on it that'll work for me. Let's see. Wow. It's on there pretty good. Russia's bubble wrapped their stuff really well. And it's also wrapped in a piece of plastic. <laughs> All right, here we are. In theory, this is a Helios 44 58 millimeter F2 lens with a knock-on mount, a native knock-on mount. Man, this thing's heavy. I almost think this might be steel. It's, it looks like it's aluminum. But yeah, this lens is in pretty good shape. Aperture, it looks like it's a eight-bladed aperture. It's got a little play in the aperture ring. There's a little bit of motion in it. It's not super tight, but I paid like $28 for it. I can't really complain. The focus is smooth. It's got a stiff spot in it, but it's not bad. So yeah, I'm kind of curious to see how this pans out. Let's see. It's got a scuff on the lens body there. I'll probably sharply blacken that out so it doesn't give me an artifact. Yeah, let's go put this on the camera and see what it looks like. All right, now we got the D810. Let's take this off. Let's see if this lens fits like they say it will. Okay, here's a little bit of the top. And, yeah, that's what I sprayed up. <laughs> it locked. Okay, I'm not sure what that switch does. But the aperture values are on the bottom. Uh-oh, hopefully that's not a problem. What that little switch is doing it goes a full half revolution to the lock detent to where it's like it don't yeah it, it'll spin all the way around there's no stop and then it hits the lock detent and locks in place and the aperture ring is on the bottom the aperture values so it's like it's upside down for the d810 but yeah it comes it, it fits it but it's bizarre. <laughs> There's the lock pin, okay. Yeah, there it is, and it's, it's strange. They put the aperture marks on the bottom. Okay, 
Let's just see what it'll do. I've set it up in my non-CPU lens data area as 58 millimeter f2. But now that I've programmed it as a non-CPU lens, let's see. Yeah, since it doesn't it doesn't drive the feeler. Yeah, it doesn't see the the it's missing the feeler entirely, so it can't see what aperture it's on. So you just have to run manual mode. Can't run aperture priority. I'd have to modify the ring, the aperture ring to reach over there to it to drive that feeler. And then the scaling's probably off too. That's stopped all the way down too. 16 doesn't have a decent. What kind of crap is this? I don't know what that red switch is doing. The little lens actually has some beautiful background bokeh. It's, it's gorgeous for a $28 lens that has a really crappy aperture ring and a stiff focus ring and a switch up here that I'm really not sure what it does. I need to mess around with it more and see. It's got an M in red on one side. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's actually producing some really beautiful pictures. Shot wide open works really well. As you can see here, there's something going on with the aperture blades. I may attempt to dismantle this lens and see if I can figure out what's going on in there. It doesn't look like it's too complicated to take it apart. But yeah, there's something bizarre going on with the aperture blades. They're not synced up or something, or there's wear in the track, and the detents aren't matching up with the markings on the um, aperture ring. It's got these, it's like it's skipping some of them or something, it's bizarre. But shot wide open is producing gorgeous photos. It's a beautiful little lens. If you stop it down, it's gonna have some wonky artifacts. I'm assuming that's F8. Yeah, them aperture rings are bizarre. It's not lining up right. But like I said, shot wide open, it's gorgeous. It's actually not a bad deal. If you was gonna shoot studio portraiture with it, I mean, it would give you some interesting effects. For $28, it wasn't a bad idea to play with. You know, would I recommend this? Probably not. Maybe there's other copies of it out there that have correctly functioning aperture blades, but this one's got issues with that. And there's a manual auto switch. That's what this switch is. It's a manual auto, and I don't know what it's manualing and autoing in there. It's switching between something, and there's a plunger on the back, and I'm not sure what that does. It's not affecting anything, so yeah, I can't get it to produce any kind of tangible results pushing on it. Other than that, it's a, it's a nice little piece of glass. I appreciate you watching, and y'all have a good day. And if you like my channel, hit the subscribe button. I appreciate it. Until next time, this is David, the Georgia photographer, and I'll see y'all later.